Welcome to the Breakup Recovery Podcasts by your host, Barbara Stevens. Discover the wisdom and remarkable insights of Barbara Stevens, breakup recovery mentor, author, and public speaker. Barbara offers programs and solutions for any breakup so you can turn your life around, create lasting changes for the better, and embrace life again. Hello and welcome to Break Up Recovery. I'm Barbara Stevens, your host, and this is episode number 044, Demystifying Meditation. I welcome back Kathy Daniel, who is an intuitive kinesiologist. Kathy has been a guest on Break Up Recovery podcast a number of times and offers so much in the way of advice, tips and guidance. So in today's podcast, Kathy is going to help demystify meditation. I know when you talk to people about meditation, there can be so many different conversations, expectations, ideas, and sometimes it's just all too hard for people to understand the concept, or they don't know how to start meditating, or they've tried it and find it difficult to maintain the practice. In today's society, we all seem to have large amounts of stress in our lives, especially when someone is going through a breakup. We all hear about how meditation is good for you, how it lowers stress levels, changes your mood, quietens the voice that runs continually in your minds. It can lower your anxiety levels, and I'm quite sure there are many other benefits that I haven't mentioned. So welcome back, Kathy. Hi, Bob. Thanks for having me back. Does a meditation practice or having a meditation practice in your life good for you? Oh, ex- definitely is, Barb. It's excellent. And particularly in relation to a person that's just gone through a relationship breakup. When people go through relationship breakups, they're quite emotional. And that, because of the activation of their adrenals, can actually lead to all sorts of health problems. And the meditation, particular form of meditation called transcendental meditation, can actually modulate that and actually bring things back to more of a healthy setting. When a person goes through a relationship and they get adrenalized, they can have all sorts of things happen where they start to get indigestion, they start to get hypermotile bowel, which means that they go to the toilet a lot. You wouldn't call it diarrhea, but it's not comfortable. They might get palpitations, they might feel sweaty and anxious, they might even go off their food and actually feel nauseous at the thought of food, all because of the emotionality of their situation. Oh, other things that can happen is that their heart rate and their blood sugars can go up as well. So this particular form of meditation, which has a fancy name of transcendental meditation, it's actually been proven to lower your blood pressure if you're stressed. It's been proven to ease heart palpitations, all of those things that I just discussed. It actually brings them back into the norm. And it's such a simple meditation. It's all about spending 20 minutes twice a day just focusing on a word or a picture. And that word or a picture might be a flame. It might be what you imagine God to be or an angel to be, or it could be the sunrise or the face of your child. And the word might be peace or love or joy or happiness or om. You can just choose something that is meaningful to you and that calms you down. And basically you either just keep imagining that image or keep saying that word as a mantra over inside of yourself. So you're not actually saying the word, it's something that you're saying inside of your mind. Well, you can say it out loud too, but sometimes people kind of like to keep it a little bit within. So how hard is it to get into meditation? Oh, Barb, when you first start, your mind goes off on a little racetrack. It's quite amazing. All of a sudden you'll be saying, for instance, love, love, and then your mind jots off to the shopping list and all the chores you've got to do and what's happening tomorrow. And what you need to do is as soon as you're aware that you've gone off in a different direction, just bring your mind back to that word or that image again and you'll find your mind will go again and off to another direction. And as soon as you realize once again you're off in that different direction and you're not in your meditation, you just bring it back. And the commonest thing is that a person will start to berate themselves or criticize themselves for their mind wandering. So once again, when that happens, 
just bring yourself back and focus on that word or that image. And you'll find if you do it for 20 minutes twice daily, ongoing seven days a week, over time it'll get much easier to maintain your focus and you'll find that all of those symptoms that are going along with your distress, whether it's racing heart, palpitations, blood pressure, blood sugar, hot sweats, anxiety, um, nausea, indigestion, hypermotile bulb, they'll all settle down. Kathy, what would be the time frame that a person would be able to see the benefits of maintaining a meditation practice? But everyone's different and it depends on the level of anxiety that you're in. And particularly if there's children involved in the relationship breakup, there tends to be a lot more anxiety. So then it takes a little bit longer to keep practicing it before you actually become more settled. So how do you know you're doing it right, Kathy? You know that you're doing it right when you come out of that 20 minutes and you feel calmer or settled and more peaceful with inside yourself. And is it a bad thing if you fall asleep during the practice? No, not at all, because often when a person's been through a relationship breakup, they're highly adrenalised. They find it hard to go to sleep. They find it hard to actually slow down and relax. And so if they do fall asleep, it's an absolute bonus. So how would you suggest that they know when the 20 minutes is over? Well, you can set a little timer on your mobile phone or um, if it's just before you're going to bed, I wouldn't worry about it. You'll just fall off to sleep. So do you think having music is a good way to meditate as well, having music in the background? Yes, music in the background is good, providing it's soft and it's relaxing music. Definitely it will assist you. There's certain forms of music that actually get the brain into those relaxed brainwave patterns that help you slip into a more settled and relaxed state of being. So you said that you can use a mantra or words. Tell me exactly what a mantra is. A mantra is usually a phrase or a word of meaning and everyone can choose different words. You know, it could be family. It could be, you know, some people use certain words that relate to, to God or the universe or to um, Hare Krishna or Buddha. I think that the main thing is to keep it um, non-denominational and keep it towards what's, what's relevant to yourself. I guess the main complaint for most people who don't start a meditation or have tried it, that they can never clear their mind. So what do you recommend, Cathy, for that particular problem? So the problem of not being able to clear your mind... It is a really challenging topic, but sometimes it's just about imagining your happy place and everybody's got a different happy place. And if you can imagine that happy place, whether it's at the beach or the mountains or somewhere in nature, if you can imagine it, usually your mind will settle down. And imagining your happy place can be your mantra. Kathy, what do you say to people who use the excuse that they do not have the time? You said that the meditation practice is best done for 20 minutes in the morning and 20 minutes in the afternoon or night. There is the most common excuse that I've heard people use and that is that they are too busy. They can't fit another thing into their day. Or, you know, they might say that they do their exercise in the morning or the children take up a lot of their time getting them up and ready in the morning, getting the homework done when they get home. There is the other things that need doing, like the cooking, the dinner, the laundry to be folded and put away, lots of chores, or that their work commitments take precedence over a meditation practice. You know, they're too tired. There can be so many excuses as to why people can't find the time to meditate. So first of all, the 20 minutes twice a day was what was found to scientifically um, bring the heart rate, the palpitations, the blood pressure, et cetera, back into normal ranges when a person was stressed. 
So that was the reason for that. And what I would say is that when you are stressed, whether it's to do with a relationship breakup or not, what actually happens is that you get decreased blood flow and innovation to your stomach, your small intestine, your large intestine, your gallbladder and your bladder. So all of those organs are so much more prone to ailments and discomfort during that time of stress. And if you notice, they're all the digestive organs, so the stomach, the small intestine, the large intestine. So all of a sudden you're putting food into your body, but you're not actually digesting it properly and not assimilating it properly. And as you know, it can take over two years to get over a relationship breakup. And in that time, you're more than most likely going to be stressed all of the time or most of the time. So you're not assimilating and digesting your food properly. So I would say to you it's important if you don't want your health to start to fail because imagine you're stressed out, you've got perhaps upset children, you've got legal and financial concerns and all of a sudden you start to have not just emotional and thought pattern problems but you've actually got physiological problems in your body. So meditate to help yourself because in the long run you'll reap the reward. So I guess what you're saying is you need to make the time if you want to invest in your health. Yeah, there's nothing worse than you're emotionally, mentally stressed. You've got legal and financial concerns. If you've got children in the relationship, the children are upset, the children are playing up. Um, Perhaps the children are starting to play up at school and then all of a sudden you've got irritable bowel disease or you've got constipation or you've got indigestion or you've got a bladder infection and you've got recurrent bladder infections or you've got gallbladder disease all because you're stressed. And when you're stressed and the body um, becomes adrenalized, it actually shunts the innovation away from the parasympathetic nervous system, which is the sympathetic nervous system that relates to digestion and housekeeping of the body and to the sympathetic nervous system which is all about fight flight stress and if you've got that going on for two two and a half three years the health concerns can be quite large. Kathy do you suggest people lie down or sit up during their meditation practice? I don't have a firm belief either way. Personally, myself, I like to lie down, but occasionally I do sit up. Thanks, Cathy, for talking about transcendental meditation. I'm quite sure there are other meditation techniques available, and maybe you could come back one day and we can discuss some of those. That would be lovely, Barb. Yeah, there's some really gorgeous other techniques and I really believe that everyone should have lots of tools in their tool bag that they can use to help themselves. Kathy, thank you so much for sharing your knowledge on this meditation and demystifying some of the myths for us. I welcome you coming back and we talk more about meditation. I know today we've just talked about transcendental meditation. But there are lots of other forms that can benefit people and everybody has a different form of meditation that they can find beneficial. It's just that this one happens to be so beautifully proven to help the physiological concerns. Thank you for listening to today's podcast with Kathy Daniel. I know there were a few sound problems, so sorry about that. But the world of Skype and the internet can be very trying at times. I hope you enjoyed the subject of Transcendental Meditation with Kathy and the answers to some of the common questions people ask when they are thinking about starting a meditation practice or have tried before and thought they weren't doing it right. I certainly had a number of concerns and questions when I first started meditating. If you want to find out more information or would like to contact Kathy, this is best done by email at kathydaniel66 at live.com. So I'll spell that for you. K-A-T-H-Y-D-A-N-I-E-L 66 at live, L-I-V-E dot com. Also, feel free to message me with any questions that you have about Breakup Recovery podcasts or subjects you want me to cover in future podcast episodes by clicking on the contact button of my website, barbarastevens.com.au 
or my Facebook site, Barbara Stevens Breakup Recovery Mentor. I'm always looking for ways to help you recover from your breakup. And the last thing I'd like to say is, be gentle on yourself. You deserve happiness. If you would like to hear previous Breakup Recovery podcasts, visit barbarastevens.com.au. Connect with Barbara Stevens on social media with Barbara Stevens Breakup Recovery Mentor on Facebook and at You'll Be Okay on Twitter. Read further blogs, view webinar replays, and download your free ebook, Three Easy Steps to Surviving Your Breakup, and much more at barbarastevens.com.au.